Yeah, oh, it's all over the place. It goes down under here. See where it's in my belly button? But it goes down across and down across my rear end. And it's hot. If you put your hand on it, you can feel, see how, that's how they tell you how you got exposure. They hold it like that and you see the fingerprints. The longer your fingerprints stay in there, the more exposure. This this has been on me for three years. How did it he went to bed one night and I was still up and he came down and was going all around. I said, what the heck's the matter with you? Well, his tongue was so swollen he couldn't even talk. And we had to get a spoon and put it in there so he could breathe till we got him to the hospital. Chemicals and radiation poison. See the big patch of it on my belly and it just blows you up. To protect the integrity of the hole and to protect the surrounding deep freshwater zone, a second layer of steel casing, called surface casing, is installed and cemented inside the newly drilled hole and conductor casing. Cement is pumped down through the surface casing and up along the sides of the well to provide a proper seal. This completely isolates the well from the deepest of private or municipal water wells. Okay, this is... This water is, uh, has been tested. It's been found contaminated with high uh, explosive levels of methane and then also um, heavy metals. So I'll show you as it comes out. Now this is the water that they cannot drink anymore. Nobody will drink something like this. And we do have tests from the DEP, Department of Environmental Protection, that shows that it is not to be anymore for drinking. See smoke coming out, like oh, wow. vapors, you see the vapors? Yeah, that's nuts. You're inhaling it? Yeah, I try and smell it to see if it has a certain, sometimes it has different types of smell. Stevens. I'm a 46-year native resident of California, fifth-generation Yorker, and sixth-generation landowner in Silver Lake Township, Pennsylvania. Gandhi said, Earth provides enough for every man's need, but not every man's greed. And that's what we're facing here, folks. This is all about greed. Those on the back side of yes, those are gas wells and, and they're on, on our pad, our property, but there should be more wells here. And um, like everybody, I like money. That's where it comes from. A lot of these families have had their mineral rights for hundreds of years. So that's how they're making all the money. Like where my property is, somebody bought the rights in, in the 1930s. So. And we only have five acres, but if you have hundreds of acres and they have a productive well, you're talking millions of dollars that they can get. So it, it's very attractive to people because there's so much money to be made. But I don't think that they really think about the consequences in the long run. Um, and that's what bothers me. They, they never ask us any permission. We, uh come over to visit the land, we bought the land one day, or we bought the land and we come over one day and there's bulldozers bulldozing uh, roads through the property and uh, asking what they're doing, well, we have the, yeah, we have the rights to the gas and we're gonna, we're gonna get the gas and basically we're gonna have to live with it. And did no good to complain. Uh, we did, we complained, but I guess just not to the right people. But even the right people you complain to and you get no help. <laughs> It did no good to complain, I guess no. what I'm saying. did no good to complain. Was, uh, they just come over and came in and took over the land. All we are now is caretakers of the land. We mow the grass and take care of the land for them. It, it, this land belongs to the industry. It doesn't belong to us anymore. All we do is pay the taxes and mow the grass. We thought, we actually thought our government had safe uh, safety nets in place to protect the landowners and protect the people of the Commonwealth. 
But they don't. There's nobody. Um, no, the wife's hair falls out. She gets nosebleeds. The young boy gets body aches or uh, belly aches. The oldest boy's got rashes. Um, the wife has chemical induced asthma. Um, it's very hard to, to, to breathe at the times they uh, spew the, the uh, crud out of this well. It's very hard for any of us to breathe. The NPR State Impact did a story three weeks ago. Two former Department of Health employees came forward saying they systematically hung up the phone on hundreds if not thousands of people calling with nosebleeds, headaches, uh, breathing difficulties, you name it. Uh, they, they were ignoring us. There's what it does to my face. That's just a small portion of where it swelled up my lips and that and split my lips open on, on the inside of it. It'll, uh, it just touches every part of the body. Seven layers of protection. Horizontal drilling offers many advantages when compared to vertical drilling. Back out there, it's like a living demon on you once you get this and you can't, there's nothing that can fix it. This stuff, once you get it, and if you, everybody these companies tell you that fracking's good for you, are lying. These companies that's telling you it's all safe are lying. This will kill people, and it kills people quick. Snaps my teeth off. And, uh... That was all. I had good teeth till I got into these chemicals. You know, if it's snapping off my teeth, imagine what it's doing to my bones. And this stuff, I mean, it gets in your ears and everywhere. It drives you nuts, just drives you crazy. And then you can see all the water tankers up there, all the blue tankers. That's where they get all the water for fracking. They bring it to tankers, fill up about 100 tankers. And you see them over there, they're all hosed together. And um, then they, under high pressure, they mix the sand, special sand, with chemicals. And they mix the water and then they shoot that down into the hole, into the hole that's thousands of feet down, to open the rock in the horizontal area, which has holes that have been blasted open, to open the rocks so that the methane gas can start to come out. So they do that, what we call fracking. That's the fracking stage. And I think it was Monday. Mm -hmm. There was an explosion and a fire, and it was one of the tanks. And it was a large water tank. Large water tank. Was it a round one or a square one? It was round. Round. So that's what I heard. It was a round tank, and then they, did they remove it? Because I don't see it down there. Did they remove that tank, you think? Or is it, or is it still No, there? it exploded and went in pieces. Oh, wow. And they put in another tank now. It's behind that grassy mound, yes, and it's a very large tank. Yeah, they're usually large, and they usually have one per well. There might be three down there. Well, I'm going to go to the emergency management. I want to see if we can get any answers, because the people who were across the road were all scared out of their minds. The, the windows rattled, and they heard the noise from a long distance besides across the road. So I want to get uh, information to see what they know. They still have their windows, they do. Yeah, the windows rattled, but they didn't break. But they are very, they got frightened. That was Monday afternoon. So uh, we're gonna come by. Uh, can we still come by for an interview? Okay. So there's the emergency manager. This is the county seat office. Hi, Paul. Paul. Hey. Can I get points? Yeah, I got uh, a documentarian here from uh, RT News. No cameras. You can't be on film? Okay. Nope. So I went to emergency management and he says he doesn't even, he just knows of the incident, but they don't get take any information about land, uh, the residents' complaints about it, unless it somehow involves physical or health issues and it, of immediate danger to life and health. So what's immediate danger to life and health? For me, when you hear a big boom and you don't normally don't hear these things, on a gas site, and then you then you see people coming in, all kinds of trucks and things. That is dangerous. Could be another boom. Fingers ain't working. The rain's coming. <laughs> yeah, the rain's coming. The rain's 
coming. That has a good sound to it. So you, you, your fingers swollen when they rain? Oh, sometimes Whoa, man, you can't. You, sometimes I can't even bend them. See, you can't hold the steering See how my hands really. are starting to, to shake? The rain's coming. Yeah, you can't hold the steering wheel. So that's why I got into this, So because I couldn't bend my fingers. So I got something to try to loosen them up. So you, 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 you react on the weather? Oh, yeah. Badly. Yeah, he's got lots of signs. He's got the most signs that are anti-frack in the whole county that I know of. <laughs> Prior to gas drilling, there was nothing wrong with my water, and that's their pretest showing there was nothing wrong. And then it started changing colors. Oh, I started smelling. Well, DEP got involved. When DEP got involved, they found all this lovely stuff in my water. Uh, uranium-235, a 236, uranium-238, uh, uranium-234. Then we got three grades of ferrium. The special sauce, which we don't even know what it is. They just put a number to it because we're not allowed to know what it is. And then we got strontium, uh, sulfites, silica, which is the silica sand used for the fracking, manganese, magnum, uh, lithium. The lead levels are in the ozones. Range resources use 880 chemicals, 650 of them is cancer causing, and a third of them is neurological. Then plus on top of all that stuff getting in your body, you'll get the silica sand which flies over your head of these well pads and it'll go into your lungs. While it goes in, it doesn't come out and it's treated sand. Hey guys, can you tell please what happened to the creek? Yeah. Um, the, there was cracking all the way down the river and there was a blowout. Yep. This creek has had eight blowouts. Uh, what is blowout? Do you know? Um, a blowout is when like all the fracking water just like it, it's like an explosion of water and it just drains into somewhere and it has to drain somewhere so they were trying to cover it up with sandbags but the sandbags just made it worse the water overflowed that and more frack water came and if you drink this water it'll cause you major nosebleeds sometimes people have to go to the hospital it's not good This used to be one of the best fishing places in this whole stream. I've caught walleye pike in here 28 inches. I've caught muskies in here, saugers, bass, catfish, any kind of fish you can think of just about. I've caught right in this area. And for the last three years, I don't fish it anymore because of this discharge up above that I'll take you to. This is what is referred to as an AMD treatment plant, or acid mine drainage treatment plant. The water from the abandoned mine, which has acid in it, is brought into this location. After that water is treated and it's tested for pH, then it comes out here and goes through this pipe and it's discharged into the stream. Now, this is supposed to be clean water. Now we just tested that water and we know that that water right there is 6.7 times higher in electronic conductivity than what it's supposed to be. But what causes that electronic conductivity to be so high? Well, we did a test on this and we found out that there's a lot of sodium sulfate, which is characteristic of mining. But there's bromide in that water, high levels of bromide. Bromide is not found in coal. There should not be any bromide in that water at all. If it is, only a very meager amount. And we're getting three to 4,000 parts per billion bromide in there. It should not be in that water. We're getting strontium in there, and it should not be in there. And we're getting high levels of sodium, which should not be in there. That stuff is coming from someplace else. It's not associated with coal mining. It's chemicals that's associated with the Marcellus gas drilling. When they drill this Marcellus 
wells. They drill down through these mines. If they're hauling the flow back water away properly, like they say they are, and disposing of it properly, like they say they are, then where's that bromide coming from? Bromide comes out of the Marcellus gas. It's in that water. Where's it coming from? You tell me where that bromide's coming from. I asked the DEP, they don't know. I asked the mining companies, they don't know. I asked the EPA, they don't know. Somebody has to know where that's coming from. It's, it's not getting in there by magic. Somebody's putting it in there. Where's it coming from? Is the ground cracked underneath and when they, when they hydrofrack, it blows up through the bottom? I don't know. Is it dumped in there illegally into these old mines? I don't know. I know it's there. Why is the regulatory agency not finding out where this is coming from? That bromide will go into this creek, will go down where we were at and on down below, and there's an intake for our water down there, which we have a water treatment plant for municipal drinking water. And it'll go through that plant, and they will treat it with chlorine. And when they treat it with chlorine, they produce a compound called trihalomethane. Trihalomethane is a cancer-causing agent. Bam, fracking now. 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 Since 2008, I've been documenting all oh, the gas development in our county from the first sites in the southern part in Dimmick. And I've been making videos and photographs and then giving citizen gas tours, showing people from all over the world, from New York, all over our country, to see what's happening to us in our communities, what's happening near our homes and on our farms, and also even on school property. All our schools are leased to gas companies. Don't you wish you go to have your kids go to that school? Since all the gas, the gas wells are drilled right there on the school property. Yeah, where are they? They drilled on the property and they fracked it and everything else during school the whole nine years. So that silica sand was going across that school and all them kids out in that playground Pardon? all year long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then here's all the trucks. See how they put these together? They're all hosed together. And fill it up with water. <laughs> I know, he knows about my injunction. I have an injunction from Cabot Oil and Gas, so I gotta stay 100 feet away from every gas site that Cabot has, which is one of seven companies here. So they consider me a danger, a senior citizen woman with a camera. And I bring people to see what they can from the public roads. So, uh, meanwhile, that company has 550 DEP, Department of Environmental Protection Violations, since 2008 in our county alone, and millions in fines for their violations. So they're calling me a danger, not the company. So I find that very strange and a reversal of how I would view it. I'll provide the background music for your... Thanks, man. Yeah. It's a shame having all this girl in like this, I'm telling you. And to make you cry, you have to put all your time, sweat, and tears into something. Making a living with it. Can't even get back into it. That's the saddest part. Driving them, miss driving them a lot. I was on the road a lot. When the gas prices got so high up here, they were at five dollars a gallon. For an owner operator, you can't make a living. So I parked my trucks, and they had a sign out that says "Drivers Wanted." So I went down to drive what they call the baby bottles to haul the water. Well, they put me on the waste side of the water. Well, the waste sides. Uh, got all the chemicals in it, 
all the flow back and that it comes back out of the well. That's all the poisons. Uh, the radiation, the uh, radium-226 comes back out of that hole. Uranium, uranium-235 comes up. That's Some of that's weapons grade. This stuff is so potent and they had us as workers standing right next to this stuff, playing with it, putting it, it was splashing all over our hands and everything. Um, and they never tell you nothing, you know, you just, you're just going to haul water, you're just going to haul mud, you know. They don't give you any information because they don't want nobody to know what it does to them. If, if they were honest when they first come in and said, well, you're going to be hauling radiation and chemicals and they don't tell you none of that. Talk about radiation, Ken. <coughs> we currently know that radiation is beginning to appear <coughs> throughout our water system here in Greene County, Washington County, and most of the other places. Radium 226 and 228 are the two commonly known tracer radioactive <coughs> elements that if found in the Marcella shell. Now we know the Marcella shell is deep in the ground. That stuff did not reach us until flowback water started coming up on the surface. Along with a hodgepodge, or I like I re refer to it, a witch's brew of other chemicals that they put down in and bring back up. And we don't know the chemical reactions that are taking place because they lied to us. Do facilities exist yet to take the radioactivity out of the brine or pipes from the Marcella Shale? They don't exist, and they'll have to be built. Um, unless, you know, the industry argues that no one's going to be harmed. I have a friend who has a daughter, probably 26, and she works in the fracking industry and deals with the fluid, the waste fluid. Went home to her mom, said her mom, you know, she was late or something, but she went to give her a hug. Mom, don't touch me. I'm ready. You know, I have my clothes are a mess. They're radioactive. And she took them off and put them in the washing machine. But I think that is not probably what you should do with <laughs> radioactive stuff. And then, so this last week, I'm on the phone talking to Marsha, and she said, yeah, and they're trying to get pregnant. So I'm thinking, oh, my God. Oh, so, yeah. You don't have to accept it. This is your right. This is the Commonwealth law. It's just as powerful as the First Amendment. Your right of freedom of speech, your right to carry and bear arms. This is the law. You don't have to accept this. It's the law. Article 1, Section 27 of the Pennsylvania Constitution. It has our right to clean air and clean water and, and enjoyment of your land, and we don't have it. We don't have either one. It's been very sad for us because we put so much into this ourselves. the trees are all growing up but uh, we call this the Emerald City because it reminds us of the Wizard of Oz and we used to have a million dollar view here and now we get to look at this cryogenic gas plant you selling your house they say. well when my husband he's 60 he wants to retire in five years and sell our business but um, and my mother-in-law is elderly, so we don't want to leave her. But when we do move, we're going to move far beyond the shale, maybe in Ohio, uh, where they're not drilling at all, because we don't want any part of it anymore. It's just been such a disruption to our lives. But for 22 years, we've lived here, and we moved out here for peace and quiet and to live in the country. And this has just invaded our whole world out here, with the trucks and the noise and the dust and the fear of what's going to happen, especially when that uh, got struck by lightning. We lived four hours. We weren't sure what was going to happen, and we weren't evacuated. And uh, there's a, there was a fire in Greene County um, a couple months ago, and they had to get crews in from Texas to put the fire out because they didn't know how, and it burned for a week. And that goes through your mind. You know, this place gets struck by lightning. What's going to happen to us? Are we vulnerable? What were, what were you saying? Oh, just that smell. Is that, I don't know what they were burning, but when they, when you do, you, you taste it. When they have like the um, emissions coming out, you can taste it in your mouth, your eyes burn. 
and they uh, process it through everything that they're fracking and they're bringing up through the ground. They pipe into this plant and they process it and then they either ship it out by truck or by rail car. There's a certain amount of pressure that they have that they have to release and legally they're allowed to release a certain amount per month. And I really don't have the exact number at the top of my head, but uh, when they do that, they call, call it a, um, an incident. They have a lot of different terms for it, but they release a big jet of black smoke. And depending on the weather, uh, like say there's, there's certain days too, like the, if it's humid, the air is real thick, those are dangerous days for people that are elderly or children or people with asthma. And uh, it, it's just awful in the air. You can, it burns your eyes and your nose. and it, It's just not a good feeling to have. So I was walking, I saw a sign there, and on the sign it said no trespassing, but on the other side it didn't say nothing, that side was made for you and me, this land is your land, this land is my land, from California to the New York Islands, from the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream waters. This land was safe for you and me. Because that's a letter I wrote Obama. He was turning around <clears throat> doing a bus tour last summer. Mm -hmm. Matt Ryan, the mayor of Binghamton, New York, is a personal friend of mine. I gave him a copy of this letter, and this letter was personally hand delivered to President Obama by the mayor of Binghamton. I want him to come to Dimmick, Pennsylvania, and see the truth about gas drilling before he stands on TV and lies to the American people, thinking that this is such a great thing. This didn't work. No, oh. being polite didn't work, so I guess I'll have polite to say- didn't work. No, so now Obama, get your ass here. Right. You know, I pay your salary. That's right. You pay your salary. Right, it's paid by taxes. Get your ass up here and see what the hell we're living through. Works for me, how about you? Right, I agree. Personally, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna speak, this is this is my future. Yes. I respect you, believe me. I respect I, right. I respect everyone in this right. movement. Right. But those people that came down, if they actually cared, if they gave right. a excuse my language, this is a serious problem. It is. It's happening now, and yes. we need to stop it now. And those mothers, right. if they cared, they would stop. They would come down, and they would support us verbally. What? You know, that's not just household garbage. They're bringing it in. What do they bring? Industrial stuff? Big time. And they just gave them the okay to go a couple hundred feet higher. Higher? That landfill is going to go four times the size. With a lot of people, because I live downwind. And I'm getting a lot of foliage, trees dying off. You'll come out and everything's brown and dead. In the mornings, you got this white. Uh, actually, DEP, I'm only a half mile that way. Uh, you know, there were, there, they put radiation detectors at my place. I, I have take, taken radiation readings myself. Uh, do I want out of here? Yeah. You have kids? Not here now. It's that bad, huh? Uh, worse than you think. And obviously, they, the state gave them a second set of rules.
hello. Yeah. Sure. Sure. You have what? Geiger counters to measure radiation. You have special devices? In yeah. Oh, yeah. And there's, there's just one here I bought. It's Radex. Um, that's how you live when you live by a landfill. You know, we're 17 micro rims here in the house. A lot of times I heard, well, you get much, you get the same amount if you go to a dentist with the next races. Yeah, but I don't sit in a dentist chair and get x-rays seven days a week, 24 hours a day. And at that point, they had no comment. We shall not be You're hurting me. Forever. You're hurting me. Solid. You're hurting me. You're hurting me. Solid. Forever. The movement makes us strong. Don't let these get Solidarity forever. Solidarity forever. Solidarity forever. The industry owns DEP, owns the governor, and he absolutely, absolutely refused to tax the gas industry for the shit they're doing around here. And what was his reasoning? Oh, I don't want them to stop and run out of state. So we're not gonna tax them. You are owned by the industry if you turn around and say that. As far as I'm concerned, Tom Corbett is a f***ing gas hole. Gas industry can blame you for things, so now I'm keeping a record for wherever I go <laughs> in my checkbook like, mm -hmm. where I've been, and I try and charge everything I buy so that they know where I am, because later the industry will try and blame things on us, like they tried to yep. say to me, to my lawyers a month ago, that I was on a gas site, and they, they had no pictures, they had only eyewitness. And when I found out what gas site it was, I've never been there. I didn't even know of this gas site, and they were trying to pin it on me. And there's a very large diesel tank right there for diesel fuel that they don't use for fracking. Right. Here's an 8,000 gallon diesel spill. Covered over sand, don't worry about it. Remember I turn to tell you these liners tear and rip? Look at this from all weight now. Well, these liners are just tearing apart. You got another set of wells here. You know, you got two tanks. You know, evaporators. You know, we put wells and farms so far out in the goddamn woods, you'll never see it. We do shit out in the country you don't even know about, boy. You only have a fifth. Of, you only think you know what's going on. Well, you can, I mean, you can... You know what's going on because we let you know what's going on. You can see it at night. It's, like, ridiculous. Right, but you can't see it. Yeah, because you, you can't, can't get to it, it, okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You ain't getting there. You're not getting here. And now they got all these farmers so goddamn scared. They control the land. Yeah. Sometimes when they drill down in those casings, those wells, they pressure it so much that they can't get a good seal and the gas escapes from the Marcellus alongside the borehole out on the outside of the casings and comes to the surface. That is called thermogenetic methane. If they don't get a good seal, and they'll tell you that their casings are sealed properly and stuff, and that's not true. We got pictures of methane gas bubbling up alongside of casings. Uh, so it, it's, it's not true. Sometimes they fail. Uh, more often than they'd like to admit, the casing fails and the methane is vented into the atmosphere. And you have to remember that methane is like anywhere from 30 to 40 times more of a greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. So we're worried about the carbon imprint when we really should be worried about the methane imprint right now. That's what? 
it's bubbling. You can hear the casing. If you get down here and listen to this, this right over to this area, I was listening to this one to see if it was bubbling. You can hear the, the gas leak around the casing down in here. When you get down in this area with your ear, you can hear it. I think you can smell it too. Oh, yeah, you definitely can smell it. They tell you there's no smell to it, but you can smell that one. How deep the ash, you can smell it. Beautiful. You want more? No, you've had enough. You've had enough. You've had enough. She's my girl, aren't you? Now this is the little store that got con also a problem, contaminated with super high levels of arsenic. They were told not to use their water, uh, use bottled water, and right now it's closed. They went out of business. The name of the store was called Heavenly Angels, but uh, the heavens did not save them from contaminated water. So we circled on a map where the park was and where different areas were out in the country, and this was ideal for us because it was 15 minutes away. We could get off of work and take our boat and go fishing every day after work. I literally haven't been there in probably five or six years because I can't bear the thought of them doing all this around here. And they've had leaks. There, there's been dead fish found. And... Oh, there's another well. See, there's a well right there. I would pack a picnic and we'd have our dinner up here like a couple times a week on our boat. We fish every week. The black sh roof shed. They spent up to 100000 on that shed, Cabot, to see if they can clean up the water for that family. That they took tiny a, one? That, that shed yeah, over there. They took, there. they took a okay. settlement, that family, yeah, plus a gag order. Most of That's the families here took gag That's orders, so, and they can't speak against Cabot. That's, like That's what kind of free speech we have in this country. Once you deal with corporations, they take away your free speech. They're trying to take away my free speech, his free speech. We're still talking. That's why I'm in court. They dragged me to court. They, they've, then he has to sue them. So this is what we get. They can't speak on camera, all these people, but they know a lot. That means secrets are being held here. This is a country of secrets. If you have to hold secrets, what are you hiding? If you can't be completely open and transparent, what are you hiding? I've been in there, I've been on that property. I have a video of their filtration system and their shed. Vera, I've never seen the fish die in that pond and the fish, in 20 some odd years. And the fish were I all dead never. here. Uh, I've never seen anything like that before. This Every is the only species. pond in the area. All the fish were dead about, what, maybe two months ago? Yeah, over two I months. I have video of that too. All the fish came up. Hundreds every, of them every, dead. Every species. And look what it's next to, a leaking ever. gas well. And meanwhile, DEP comes here and Fish and Boat Commission, they say there's no connection. No connection to gastro. And common sense. Oh, there's a big one. Most of them are small, but there's a big one, yeah. That's just... God Dude. bless America, right? Well, it was healthy, and then in one evening, you, you, it was fine, and then you come out the next morning, and this is what I had. And you can see here, it took this out and kind of goes down the line. I mean, this happens overnight when you have a lot of moisture in, in, in the air and somewhat an inversion where everything stays close to the ground. Uh, that tree there used to be a beautiful, healthy tree. And within a period of 2011, 12 and 13, you could see what happened to it. There's gas beds. It's a community page, so anybody can get on. If you're over in Australia, and you have something going on in Australia, you click up on this page, send what's going on in Australia. People around the world, this ain't just the United States. This is a global thing. If you had this knowledge, you're dangerous, because you know what they're trying to hide. And I know extremely well, because I live it. As you can tell, it's in me. 
Leave, leave a review for PA Department of Health. Well, that, that's when I was telling your mom that they had them two uh, workers retired that they wouldn't even let you, the health department, didn't even want to answer anything about fracking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they're investigating them now. But anything that's anything that's anything that's fracking, uh, gas, is on gas vets. Start getting on it. Uh, send a friend request to me. But this is all I do. I shouldn't pass information all day, all night, all day. People just pass by this, you know? I wonder how many people stop and look at this, you know? So they can't use their water. The water changed in December of 2011 when it came out of the faucet. It started to sputter. There was gas in it. And then it changed color. When they looked in the toilet, it was a different color. It was a dark color. And they were getting gas even in the bathroom. They told them you should vent a window, otherwise you can get dizzy from the gas that builds up during the hot water when you shower. It comes out through the hot water. So at this point, they right now have to use replacement water and bottled water for drinking. So now they have to pay for it. The gas company paid for it for a year and a half, and now they have to pay for it. You're fishing this. You're going to be on TV over in Russia. How's that? Awesome. <laughs> That's my pride and joy there. It's, it's quiet. It's, this, this is paradise. This is, this is as close to paradise as you're going to get before leaving to go to heaven. This is it. This is what God put on the earth. That's why he said Adam and Eve take care of the garden, all the garden's earth. We ain't doing too good of a job of it. Well, I can't say we, most of us ain't too, doing too good of a job of it. Fracking and all that garbage is nothing but profit money. Hooray for me and the heck with you. I ain't never seen anybody who can eat, eat money, drink money. But I sure, uh, sure can eat the fish. I sure can go in the woods and find stuff to ramps or whatever to eat it, you know. I can live a, I can live here. I can't live off our money. I'll go over here. Keep it up. Help! <laughs> Help! You just keep that rod up in the air. He's a big one. Ain't it go in the water? <laughs> Right, Jimmy. Right. Yeah, Mine. Up to the, walk them up to the bank area. Sure, it's both of ours. Yeah. Sorry, but I can put the rod in. This is their water well. That's been disconnected. I have videos. I've, I have over 500 videos on my YouTube channel showing all different parts of what's happened to us since 2008, 2009. Can I use videos from your YouTube channel? Yeah. And uh, we have this stack, and when I, I show pictures where I put my camera in there, and you can see the water bubbling. So much methane gas coming up, it's now bubbling like you're cooking spaghetti. And this is to release the methane so there's no explosion. Otherwise, something could happen. It's so close to the house, and they were worried, so they put these things all over. I would like to see America become completely energy independent so we don't have to go to anybody else for gas, anybody else for oil, anybody else for anything. And that's what I want to see in this country. And this fuel is not for us. Every bit of gas extracted here, almost every bit, is being sent elsewhere to large cities, and then it'll be going to ports and then liquefied, and it'll be sold to every country willing to pay top dollar for it. And our prices will skyrocket because we'll have to compete for those high energy prices at the coast. Uh, we'll have to compete with Japan and Russia and China and India and Norway and all these countries that want our fuel source. If this, this was sold to all of us as America's fuel and energy independence, well, it's not America's fuel if you send it to other countries for top dollar. And it's not energy independence if you take all of our
gas and our oil and our coal and send it overseas so that our price goes up. That's not energy independence. That is that makes us an, a third world energy extraction colony. That's a more damage in front of my place. That's how our roads are kept here. And we have the most wells in this town. This is the kind of conditions we have to live with. And we have to watch, if I get my car in here, that ruins the whole front end. Front end, man, you'll lose a tire, wheel, axle, that whole damn thing, man. That whole deep here. And this is what they allow. Cabot should be on top of this, plus our state, make sure our roads are not allowed to go this deep, the potholes. This is what drilling brings to your community. Let's see how deep. Below the water. Below the water, that's how deep it is below the water. And now it's lifted up over here. Look at this part. Can you see that? Wow, that's all. Wow. Let me see if I can get out and just take that oh, for a second. You can see that road right there. Look at the road, it's just caved in on the side here. I can barely have any room to drive. And this is just outside of Montrose Borough. Let me see, at this point I should clock it. It's a, maybe half a mile. Hi, it's Craig Stevens. I'm here today to represent the people on the other end of the pipelines with contaminated water and contaminated air and land. The more we drill, the more we send pipe, th pipe it and make liquefied natural gas, the more of my neighbors all around the country are getting poisoned. Uh, so stop Cove Point, stop the infrastructure, stop the fracking. seven years. We are a family of five and we live directly across the street from Dominion Cove Point. This is where my daughter, now nine, learned to ride a bike. This is where my children have received their most precious Christmas gifts. This is where we have made a home. Now we are covering up our existence here to try and sell a home that sits across from a risk far too dangerous for my family. My daughter has cried because there is nothing, no other house out there that will make her happy. So I'm not sure exactly what they're doing right now, but um, as an import facility, but it's not nearly as much noise as they're bringing to the community with the expansion. How many times bigger it's supposed to be, like in comparison to what it is now? now? There'll be a liquefaction facility there, which is not there now. There'll be a 400,000 gallon tank of propane, which is not there now. 75,000 gallon tank full of aqueous ammonia. Look that one up. If it gets airborne, that's the stuff that they evacuate entire towns if they're carrying it in the train and it leaks. I mean, they've got eight new pieces of equipment, very large, the train, a 130 megawatt power station, which will, by the way, not provide one bit of electricity for this neighborhood nor anybody in the area. It's all to chill the gas down to minus 259 degrees. So it's a joke. And they're calling it the same thing. Oh, we can just use the eight-year-old environmental impact statement because it's the same as always been there. No, it's a hundred times bigger of a deal that's going to be there, not the same thing. If it was the same, it would be shuttered just like that one is right now. There's no activity over there. There's minimal activity, and they're protecting it like they've got the president living there. Wait till you see what they do when this thing is turned into a export facility. It will be like uh, machine guns on the fence, I and mean, they're because they're going to have to protect it from the bad guys, and that would be, you know, us, I guess. <laughs> Because of the way, my distance from the landfill, the height of the landfill, the height of this house, and where that garage and this sets, is almost like a funnel with your air currents. 
and it's here where everything takes the hardest hits. Now, if you look at these sidewalk spots, that burnt into that burnt, this concrete is old, it's a sandy type mixture, but it literally, as it sat in, burnt into the concrete, which means it's highly caustic. And if it's etching the concrete, once again, what is it doing to the human system? You know, we've got different ways to fish. See how, see how they walk around happy? That's their life. You know, like I said, fracking comes in, they won't, you'll never hear that again. You'll never hear of these birds, you'll never hear the water. This will all be going if it gets in here. It ain't gonna get in here. See where it's starting already? One of these sides I seen this morning had a spot of it coming. It's a big problem because we live here, we're the taxpayers, and we can't get our own floats in the parade. I'm not trying to be controversial. Ours says, Citizens for Clean Water, our truck. And we're going to give out information about if people are having water problems to contact us and we'll come and help them out. We're not demonizing anybody. We're not talking bad about the industry. We're just trying to help our neighbors. That's controversial. But having a water truck uh, that's used for fracking uh, in the parade or a converted car in a natural gas is not controversial. So we're confused. Uh, we're in America. It's the 4th of July celebrating our freedoms and our independence. But we, the citizens, can't uh, be free to express ourselves. But the industry can be supportive. They're being good neighbors. Well, they're not being good neighbors by contaminating our water. Oh, it's all over the place. It goes down under here. See where it's in my belly button? But it goes down across and down across my rear end. And it's hot. If you put your hand on it, you can feel, see how, that's how they tell you how you got exposure. They hold it like that and you see the fingerprints. The longer your fingerprints stay in there, the more exposure. This. This has been on me for three years. How did it he went to bed one night and I was still up and he came down and was going all around. I said, what the heck's the matter with you? Well, his tongue was so swollen he couldn't even talk. And we had to get a spoon and put it in there so he could breathe till we got him to the hospital. Chemicals and radiation poison. See the big patch of it on my belly and it just blows you up. To protect the integrity of the hole and to protect the surrounding deep freshwater zone, a second layer of steel casing, called surface casing, is installed and cemented inside the newly drilled hole and conductor casing. Cement is pumped down through the surface casing and up along the sides of the well to provide a proper seal. This completely isolates the well from the deepest of private or municipal water wells. Okay, this is... This water is, uh, has been tested. It's been found contaminated with high uh, explosive levels of methane and then also um, heavy metals. So I'll show you as it comes out. Now this is the water that they cannot drink anymore. Nobody will drink something like this. And we do have tests from the DEP, Department of Environmental Protection. 
that shows that it is not to be any more for drinking. See smoke coming out, like oh, wow. vapors, you see the vapors? Yeah. Uh, that's nuts. You're inhaling it? Yeah, I try and smell it to see if it has a certain, sometimes it has different types of smell. First and foremost, a human rights struggle. We need to know that we don't have to be tireless and fearless. I'm tired and scared all the time. Good morning, D.C. Yes, hi, man. Uh, hello, my name is Craig Stevens. I'm a 46-year native resident of California, fifth-generation New Yorker, and sixth-generation landowner in Silver Lake Township, Pennsylvania. Gandhi said, Earth provides enough for every man's need, but not every man's greed. And that's what we're facing here, folks. This is all about greed. Are those on the back? Are those yes, yours? those are gas wells, and, and they're on, on our pad, our property, but there should be more wells here. And um, like everybody, I like money. That's where it comes from. A lot of these families have had their mineral rights for hundreds of years. So that's how they're making all the money. Like where my property is, somebody bought the rights in, in the 1930s. So, and we only have five acres, but if you have hundreds of acres and they have a productive well, you're talking millions of dollars that they can get. So it, it's very attractive to people because there's so much money to be made. But I don't think that they really think about the consequences in the long run. Um, and that's what bothers me. They, they never ask us any permission. We uh, come over to visit the land. We bought the land one day, or we bought the land, and we come over one day, and there's bulldozers bulldozing uh, roads through the property. and. Uh, Asking what they're doing. Well, we have the yeah, we have the rights to the gas, and we're going we're going to get the gas, and basically we're going to have to live with it. And did no good to complain. Uh, we did we complain, but I guess just not to the right people. But even the right people you complain to, and you get no help. <laughs> you did no good to complain. I guess no. what I'm saying. Did no good to complain. Those uh, they just. Come over and came in and took over the land. All we are now is caretakers of the land. We mow the grass and take care of the land for them. It, it, this land belongs to the industry. It doesn't belong to us anymore. All we do is pay the taxes and mow the grass. We thought we actually thought our government had safe uh, safety nets in place to protect the landowners and to protect the people of the Commonwealth, but they don't. There's nobody. Um, you know, the wife's hair falls out, she gets nosebleeds, the young boy gets body aches, or uh, belly aches, the oldest boy's got rashes, um, the wife has chemically induced asthma. Um, it's very hard to, to, to breathe at the times they uh, spew the, the uh, crud out of this well, it's very hard for any of us to breathe. The NPR State Impact did a story three weeks ago. Two former Department of Health employees came forward saying they systematically hung up the phone on hundreds if not thousands of people calling with nosebleeds, headaches, uh, breathing difficulties, you name it. Uh, they, they were ignoring us. There's what it does to my face. That's just a small portion of where it swelled up my lips and that and split my lips open on, on the inside of it. It'll, uh, it just touches every part of the body. Seven layers of protection. Horizontal drilling offers many advantages when compared to vertical drilling. Back out there, it's like a living demon on you once you get this and you can't, there's nothing that can fix it. This stuff once you get it and if you everybody these companies tell you the fracking's good for you are lying these companies that's telling you it's all safe are lying this will kill people and it kills people quick snaps my teeth off 
Yeah. That was all. I had good teeth till I got into these chemicals. You know, if it's snapping off my teeth, imagine what it's doing to my bones. And this stuff, I mean, it gets in your ears and everywhere. It drives you nuts, just drives you crazy. up there, all the blue tankers. That's where they get all the water for fracking. They bring it to tankers, fill up about 100 tankers. And you see them over there, they're all hosed together. And um, then they, under high pressure, they mix the sand, special sand, with chemicals. And they mix the water and then they shoot that down into the hole, into the hole that's thousands of feet down, to open the rock in the horizontal area, which has holes that have been blasted open to open the rocks so that the methane gas can start to come out. So they do that, what we call fracking. That's the fracking stage. And I think it was Monday, mm -hmm. there was an explosion and a fire, and it was one of the tanks. And it was a large water tank. Large water tank. Was it a round one or a square one? It was round. Round. So that's what I heard, it was a round tank, and then they, did they remove it? Because I don't see it down there. Did they remove that tank, you think? Or is it, or is it still No, there? it exploded and went in pieces. Oh, wow. And they put in another tank now. It's behind that grassy mound, yes, and it's a very large tank. Yeah, they're usually large, and they usually have one per well. There might be three down there. Well, I'm going to go to the emergency management. I want to see if we get any answers, because the people who were across the road were all scared out of their minds. The, the windows rattled, and they heard the noise from a long distance besides across the road. So I want to get uh, information to see what they know. They still have their windows, they do. Yeah, the windows rattled, but they didn't break. But they are very, they got frightened. That was Monday afternoon. So uh, we're gonna come by. Uh, can we still come by for an interview? Okay, so there's the emergency manager. This is the county seat office. Hi, Paul. Paul. Hey. Can I get points? Yeah, I got uh, a documentarian here from uh, RT News. No cameras. You can't be on film? Okay. Nope. So I went to emergency management and he says he doesn't even, he just knows of the incident, but they don't get take any information about land, uh, the residents' complaints about it, unless it somehow involves physical or health issues and it, of immediate danger to life and health. So what's immediate danger to life and health? For me, when you hear a big boom and you don't normally don't hear these things, on a gas site, and then you then you see people coming in, all kinds of trucks and things. That is dangerous. Could be another boom. Fingers ain't working. The rain's coming. <laughs> yeah, the rain's coming. Coming. That has a good sound. So you, you, your fingers swollen when they rain? Oh, sometimes oh, man, it's hands. Sometimes I can't even bend them. See, you can't hold see the how my hands really. are starting to, to shake? The rain's coming. Yeah, and you can't hold the steering wheel. So that's why I got into this, So because I couldn't bend my fingers. So I got something to try to loosen them up. So you, 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 you react on the weather? Oh, yeah. Badly. Yeah, he's got lots of signs. He's got the most signs that are anti-frack in the whole county that I know of. <laughs> Prior to gas drilling, there was nothing wrong with my water, and that's their pretest showing there was nothing wrong. And then it started changing colors. Oh, I started smelling. Well, DEP got involved. And when DEP got involved, they found all this lovely stuff in my water. Uh, uranium-235 and 236, uranium-238, uh, uranium-234. Then we got three grades of ferrium. The special sauce, which we don't even know what it is. They just put a number to it because we're not allowed to know what it is. And then we got astronium, uh, sulfites, 
silica, which is the silica sand used for the fracking, manganese, magnum, uh, lithium. The lead levels are in the ozones. Marine's resources use 880 chemicals, 650 of them is cancer causing, and a third of them is neurological. Then plus on top of all that stuff getting in your body, you'll get the silica sand which flies over your head of these well pads and it'll go into your lungs. While it goes in, it doesn't come out and it's treated sand. Hey guys, can you tell please what happened to the creek? Yeah. Um, the, there was cracking all the way down the river mm -hmm. and there was a blowout. Yep. This creek has had eight blowouts. And what is blowout? Do you know? Um, a blowout is when, like, all the fracking water just, like, it, it's like an explosion of water, and it just drains into somewhere, and it has to drain somewhere. So they were trying to cover it up with sandbags, but the sandbags just made it worse. The water overflowed that, and more frack water came. And if you drink this water, it'll cause you major nosebleeds. Sometimes people have to go to the hospital. It's not good. This used to be one of the best fishing places in this whole stream. I've caught walleye pike in here 28 inches. I've caught muskies in here, saugers, bass, catfish, any kind of fish you can think of just about. I've caught right in this area. And for the last three years, I don't fish it anymore because of this discharge up above that I'll take you to. This is what is referred to as an AMD treatment plant, or acid mine drainage treatment plant. The water from the abandoned mine, which has acid in it, is brought into this location. After that water is treated and it's tested for pH, then it comes out here and goes through this pipe and it's discharged into the stream. Now, this is supposed to be clean water. Now we just tested that water and we know that that water right there is 6.7 times higher and electronic conductivity than what it's supposed to be. But what causes that electronic conductivity to be so high? Well, we did a test on this, and we found out that there's a lot of sodium sulfate, which is characteristic of mining. But there's bromide in that water, high levels of bromide. Bromide is not found in coal. There should not be any bromide in that water at all. If it is, only a very meager amount. And we're getting three to 4,000 parts per billion bromide in there. It should not be in that water. We're getting strontium in there, and it should not be in there. And we're getting high levels of sodium, which should not be in there. That stuff is coming from someplace else. It's not associated with coal mining. It's chemicals that's associated with the Marcellus gas drill. When they drill this Marcellus wells, they drill down through these mines. If they're hauling the flowback water away properly, like they say they are, and disposing of it properly, like they say they are, then where's that bromide coming from? Bromide comes out of the Marcellus gas. It's in that water. Where's it coming from? You tell me where that bromide's coming from. I asked the DEP. They don't know. I asked the mining companies. They don't know. I asked the EPA. They don't know. Somebody has to know where that's coming from. It's, it's not getting in there by magic. Somebody's putting it in there. Where's it coming from? Is the ground cracked underneath and when they, when they hydrofrack, it blows up through the bottom? I don't know. Is it dumped in there illegally into these old mines? I don't know. I know it's there. Why is the regulatory agency not finding out where this is coming from? That bromide will go into this creek, will go down where we were at and on down below, and there's an intake for our water down there, which we have a water treatment plant for municipal drinking water. And it'll go through that plant, and they will treat it with chlorine. And when they treat it with chlorine, they produce a compound called trihalomethane. Trihalomethane is a cancer-causing agent. Bam, fracking now. 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 Since 2008, I've been documenting oh, the gas development in our county from the first sites in the southern part in Dimmick, 
and I've been making videos and photographs and then giving citizen gas tours, showing people from all over the world, from New York, all over our country, to see what's happening to us in our communities, what's happening near our homes and on our farms, and also even on school property. 